papers on that table, just pick them up as you come in and grab your seat. So that's something that I want you to have. There's usually not going to be three papers on there like there is today. It's the first day, you just kind of get more of that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, throughout the course of this week, next week, whatever, if you see something on there, pick it up and uh, you know, just take it to your seat. But again, normally it's not going to be that amount of stuff that's on there. Normally when you come in too, um, I'll try to have this up so that you know uh, what I'm expecting of you at this point. Oops, wrong button. At this point, I'd just be grabbing your stuff from the uh, by the door and find your seat. And then I'll give you some reminders of stuff that would be kind of coming up uh, in the next couple days or week. And we'll obviously get into that here in a little bit. So some days it might be something as simple as, hey, take out notebook paper, start out new section of notes, sign up a book that's waiting for you, um, you know, start a journal entry on blah, 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 blah. But uh, it will at least kind of give you something to do as we start going. Um, you have to make sure that you are showing up on time. Uh, mentioned to you the door is closed, the door is locked. It's kind of a pain to open it up. If you uh, are coming in late, I do keep track of that stuff. If you have four tardies at that point, that's when I submit it to principals and then you know, deal with Saturday detention or whatever the case may be at that point. As, uh, as you start building them up, I'll let you know. Mate number one. Two, you got two more to go, kind of thing. So I'm not going to try to spring it on you as to uh, surprise you. Oh, by the way, Saturday detention coming up. We're going to do that. Um, cell phones, because people always have questions about cell phone policy and, and all that stuff. Mine is no phones, no earbuds, no excuses. So once you come in, make sure cell phones away. Um, don't have you know one earbud in and all that kind of stuff. I'm not picking on Justice. This is an Apple Watch that you have. I'm not going to make her take her watch off, but if it looks like she's running through 50 messages or something like that, certainly could bring it up and say, hey, it's time to kind of put that stuff away um, and let that. If uh, later on, and I think it's supposed to be next week, 10th uh, grade, we get iPads, you know, certainly we'll talk about when our policy with that, having it every day, not having it in, in children and high school, but we'll wait till that time comes before we really start going with that. Uh, Places in the room, mentioned to you, there's papers back there, I want you to pick it up there. Pencil sharpener's back there if you need it. I already showed you where the uh, sign-off pass is back there. Um, next to the hall pass is lined paper. So like tomorrow, you're gonna need some paper. If you don't have any with you, you can certainly grab it from back there and we'll do it okay. Um, the side board over here, it's kinda like your weekly syllabus. You are the last section of the English 10. It gives you a rundown of what's going on for the course of the week so you kinda have that on there. If you need to know dates or anything like that, you know, up at the top of the board, Tuesday, August 21st, that is today. So anytime you need that, that's right where it is. I think that's it for like physical space in here. The folders that you have, these are temporary folders. Uh, there's a way for me to uh, let you know what your name is. If you open up the folder, there should be five sheets of paper in there that are already hole punched. That is for your notebook. You do need to get a free ring binder. And I'm going to do a binder check by Friday. So by Friday, I want you to have a three ring binder. I don't care if it's a one inch binder, if you go with a super duper like three inch binder, whatever works for you. Um, but I want you to have a binder that you're going to use for English class. I gave you the folder today. This is temporary, so you have a place to keep your papers for now so that binder shows up. Uh, if you have it with you tomorrow, I'll start checking it off with you. I give you points now, but I know I'm not going to keep track of it today. So tomorrow, I'll take care of it. Um, I uh, gave you five sheets of paper, it says weekly syllabus, uh, you have vocab lists, notes, and, uh, or handouts, then you have notes and study guides. Those are the categories of your notebook. We do notebook checks. So when we do a notebook check, I'll give you a list of all the items that should be in there, and it'll be broken down into those categories. So it makes it easy for me to check, it makes it easier for you to stay organized. Um, it looks like I hole punched it wrong, because the, I'm going to steal yours real quick. If you put a piece of paper in here, the weekly syllabi sheet's going to be sticking out above it. I did that on purpose so that it's easier to see the sections too. So within the stuff that you've gotten today, this weekly syllabus would go in that weekly syllabi category. The other sheet of paper that you got would go in your vocab list category. And then the green packet that you got would go in your handout category. So it's just a way to kind of keep those things organized so that we have easy access to locate those items as we need to. All right. If uh, you have a spiral notebook, you can certainly use that for notes. If you want to use the line paper that I have in the back.
back of the room, and that's fine. I'm left-handed. Left-handed people hate the spiral notebooks, so that's why you know, I don't use it. But if it's something that works for you, perfectly fine. All right. So by Friday and tomorrow, I'll just start looking at seating chart. Go around the room. You know, Nate will get his points, and Jack can get his points, and Justice, and so on and so forth. You just get five points for having your binder. So by Friday, binder. If uh, locating a binder is going to be a problem, let me know by Thursday. I can help you find it. So the green sheet would go in handouts, section three. The vocab list, section two. The weekly syllabus would go in section number one. And if you have a question, like when I hand something out, what, what section do you want this in? Feel free to ask, and I'll let you know. Bless you. Friday is going to be a little bit of busy day so far as stuff coming in. Um, three ring binder check we'll do by then. And again, I'm going to do that tomorrow or Thursday as well. Vocab list I'm going to collect from you. I'll talk about that in a little bit. The other thing is I want you to fill out a survey uh, for me on Google Classroom. Some of you have used Google Classroom before. Some of you have not used Google Classroom before. Um, all of you have student Gmail. Uh, and it would be the same as what you had last year. If you're new to the district, it's your last name, first initial, and then your graduation year. So if you are in 10th grade, you would be graduating in 21. So if you're Joe Smith, smithj21 at students.nhsp.net. All of your passwords got reset. So if you were able to use your student Gmail at the end of the year last year, or you used it over the summer, it has been reset since then. Your password, and I think it's your password to log on to a school computer too, would be NHSD, and then it would be four digits, which would be your lunch pin. So whatever you use to get lunch downstairs, that would be the last four digits that you would be using for your password. Um, if you don't know what that number is, I can look it up for you after class and, and let you know. But if you try to go onto a Gmail right now and use the last year's password, from my understanding, it would not work. But you would go NHSD your lunch pin, so everyone would have a separate pin, a separate password. NHSD 2017 isn't going to work anymore. On Google Classroom, there is, and so if you go into your student Gmail, there's an invitation for Google Classroom, and then the first thing on there is a survey that I would want you to fill out. It's basically the normal stuff that gets done on paper, but I just want to get a digital copy of it. So it's, you know, um, is there any information that I need to know about you so far as seating, that kind of stuff, um, and just those kinds of questions. It does ask for parent, guardian, contact information, so make sure you know what the phone number or an email address would be um, before you fill that stuff out. I would like that completed by Friday as well, um, but you have all of Friday to do it. So as long as it gets submitted by 11.59 p.m. on Friday, you're getting the credit for completing that survey. So if you have a binder on Friday, you're getting points. If you fill out the survey by Friday, you have points. And then you can also get points for that vocab list that I'll be talking about to you shortly. The, uh, the weekly syllabus that you got, weekly planner, I give one of these to you every week. The idea is to try to keep you as organized as you possibly can be. All right? um, tenth grade, a lot of classes. Some things are getting a little bit more complicated, especially if you have Mrs. Kane for math. This kind of helps keep things organized so you know where to locate stuff and all that. Reminds you of due dates and whatnot. On the back of your weekly syllabus, if you flip it over, there is login information for Remind, um, the Remind app. It's not something that you are required to use. I think, though, it would be a pretty good idea. I told you no cell phones. This would be the one time that you can use it, where if you want to take out cell phones and lock, sign up for Remind right now, by all means, you can go ahead. But on the back of your weekly syllabus would be the information for reminder. I don't send out uh, secret homework assignments through it or anything like that. But I would give you a reminder, like on Thursday, don't forget to do your vocab list. Make sure you complete your uh, Google survey, um, three ring binder check, all that kind of stuff. So you have access to that. I think it'd be a good idea to sign up for it. You're not getting homework credit or punished for, for not being on reminder.
So weekly syllabus mentioned to you. I'll pass one of these out to you at the beginning of every week. Um, up at the top, email address. If you need to get in touch with me, that's certainly a good way to do it. If you sign up for Remind, you can also shoot me a text that way. And, you know, I'm not getting phone number. You're not getting my phone number. So it's still completely um, information is, is, uh, is still private. But if you have questions about a homework assignment, that would be the email address to use. And again, also you could send something with uh, Remind for me. Um, so course syllabus, today we're just basically doing an overview of what's going to be happening, trying to let you know what expectations are and all that kind of stuff. Starting tomorrow, that's when we'll start jumping into the content that we're going to be doing you know, throughout the course of the year. So tomorrow will kind of be like the normal day for you. On a weekly syllabus, I give you some upcoming dates, usually for the week that follows, just to kind of let you know what some stuff would be. Next week, you do have two quizzes. So you're going to have a figurative language quiz, which is going to be coming from the notes that we're going to take a look at tomorrow and on Thursday. And then on Friday, you're going to turn in a vocab list. The following Friday, you have a vocab quiz. And that's kind of like a schedule that we're going to be on throughout much of the year. Runs in basically two week cycles. One week you give me a homework assignment. The following week you get a quiz. In between, we go over the terms just to make sure everyone's good with uh, most of the time, those things happen on Fridays, end of the week. Sometimes we make a couple little adjustments to it. That's really cool. For your vocab list, up at the top, probably would be a good idea to remind yourself that it's going to be due Friday. Make sure that you do fill out your name when you turn it in, because I certainly need to know who you are. Especially when we don't know each other very well and I can't look at handwriting and go, oh, that's going to be, you know, person A, B, or C. So do Friday up at the top of your vocab list. Anytime you get a vocab list from me, it's going to be 10 words. The first four lists are all going to be kind of like literary term, literary devices. Um, English 10, it's a keystone year. You do take keystone testing. You remember last year you did some practice tests on computer. Actually, I think you did them on iPads last year with your CDTs. We do those things again as well to try to get you ready for keystones. So the first few, the first four vocab lists are all keystone terms that we kind of use throughout the course of the year. Make sure we're familiar with them, and then we'll kind of go into more traditional vocab stuff. Um, for each of them, you would give a definition. So have your definition as you normally would. I'm not worried about part of speech because they're all nouns at this point. They're all literary devices. And then you would make sure you use a sentence. Be sure that it is a meaningful sentence. So for example, Allegory is one of my vocab words this week, would not be a meaningful sentence. I need to know that you understand how that term is getting used. Um, you, can, uh, you can use an example of a term, like if you have simile, you want to write a simile as an example, that would be fine, or you want to use the term in a sentence, that would be okay. Make sure your sentences are your sentences. Make sure they are original sentences. I'd rather have you use a word incorrectly in a sentence and me tell you about it than you copy someone else's sentence. So make sure it is yours. Um, make sure you're not just copying the sentence from dictionary.com or something like that. I want to make sure you know how that word is getting used. So for, let's say, what's bias mean? Any ideas for number five? You have bias. You're like leaning towards one way. OK. And you lean towards one way, and therefore you basically favor and ignore the other side. You're not going to listen to it no matter what. So if someone is biased, they are going to be, and we can all write this definition, you get a freebie, showing support for one side of an argument don't you have if you have bias? Because my definition is incomplete. I can show support, but that doesn't mean I have to be biased. But I show support without what? If 
being there. Okay. So showing support for one side of an argument without, I go shorthand, without being fair or having reasonable evidence. It's different than being prejudiced. If you're prejudiced, you're prejudiced towards a certain group of people. You might have bias. You can have bias towards uh, topics and whatnot without it being prejudiced necessarily. But so for your definition, so in support for one side of an argument without being fair or having reasonable evidence, then I would want to use that in a sentence. So you could list something that you have bias towards. I'm biased towards Pittsburgh sports teams because that's where I grew up. Um, you could go, I am biased towards Italian cooking because that's what my grandmother always made and I love her dearly kind of thing. So I want you to have a sentence where you are using bias where I can tell you understand what it means. Not the fifth word in my vocab list is bias. You're not going to get any credit for having that sentence. Does that make sense? Your vocab homework like this, they're always worth 10 points. You get half a point for the uh, definition. You also get half a point for the sentence. So if you have 10 definitions, you have 10 sentences, only eight of them are worthwhile, it would be a 9 out of 10. Generally, this first time, I'll let you know that, hey, this sentence wouldn't necessarily work in the future. Make sure it becomes a little bit more specific. Um, you do not lose points if your definition is wrong. Now, if you're completely just, you know, coming up with stuff and writing it down because you haven't looked it up, that's different. But if you have a different interpretation of the term or you looked up a different definition because if you go through a lot of words, there could be four or five definitions, I'll let you know that it's a wrong definition, but you won't lose points for it. And generally on Monday when I pass these back to you, we go over it to make sure everyone's clear with uh, what the terms are. Right. So homework assignment for Friday, you're gonna give me the vocab list. At some point this week, starting tomorrow, you have your free reminder. I'll give you homework credit for that, give you five points. This is 10 points. And then also you filling out the survey in Google Classroom uh, will be an additional five points. The plan is tomorrow, I think we're gonna grab laptops just to make sure we can all log into Gmail accounts that we don't have any issues that um, so that we know that you can then complete the survey and sign up. Any questions, concerns, issues, anyone's worried? After this class, um, I have lunch duty downstairs, so if any of you have lunch, you can always meet up with me down there as well. If you need to stick around for a couple minutes and go over anything with me, that's perfectly fine too. All right, today's my least favorite day because it's the boring day of kind of going over all this stuff, but need to make sure that we're all on the same page. So I am taking a look at the green sheet, the green packet, two pages front and back stapled. Just want to run through this to make sure we're clear on, on what's happening uh, and there's not any confusion later on in, in the year about stuff. So again, within your notebook, the, uh, the green sheet, this one would go under that handout section within your notebook, which um, I think you have yellow paper for that, or no, that one. Um, year in English 10, mentioned this to you, that it's a keystone year, so there are some things that we do that we focus on keystone. We also tend to kind of focus on world literature. We got four main works that we look at throughout the course of the year. Oedipus Rex, which is a play. Metamorphosis, which is like a novella, a long short story. Last Lecture, um, which is kind of like an autobiography. And then Fahrenheit 451, which is full length novel. Generally, about every nine weeks, we go through these. So Oedipus Rex is our first play. We're going to start probably doing background for that one on Friday of this week, and we'll be spending a couple weeks going over that one. Oedipus is the only one that in class we'll actually be reading. Uh, since it is a play, I don't assign it as a take-home, but we'll go through that one in class and kind of read some different parts and, and talk about it. A lot of the stuff that you get, uh, I give to you in paper form as opposed to in a book. So that you have the ability to write on it, mark it up, and all that kind of stuff. You do have a large textbook that you get. Um, behind Gavin is our Elements of Literature book. It's on the shelf. It's kind of like the big book that you guys had in ninth grade. I don't remember what color it was in ninth grade. Like a greenish big anthology book. You'll get one of those.
close to the 10th grade, but we're not going to pass it on probably until like October or November because you don't need to be carrying it around for uh, which you will be getting one of those things later on. So we'll start with this on Friday. We'll go over some background stuff um, at that point, and then we'll be good to go. Grading scale should be the same as going on in any other class. Uh, a, B, 93, A minus, 90%, so on and so forth. If you keep up to speed in the sense that you're here, you stay on target with your homework, you should be fine. You should at least be in the 80% for the most part. Um, when people start having issues, it's not because they can't do the test, they can't do the work or anything like that, but attendance starts to kind of go off a little bit, and then subsequently the homework kind of starts to go off a little bit. I give a fair amount of points for homework, um, and that's there so that if you do have a test or a quiz that doesn't go so well, you still got the ability to, to make up the points. But if you start missing out on that homework, it gets very difficult to make it up. Friday, you have your vocab list due. I'm not going to take it on Monday. You have it Friday or you don't have it at the beginning of fifth period. So with your homework, make sure you have it. It's not a 50% credit on Monday or Tuesday or anything like that. Um, if you are absent for a day, make sure you check in with me so you know what's going on. If you have a weekly syllabus, so you got an idea as to what's going on for most days. Google Classroom, which we'll get into later, will kind of help you stay up to speed with those things. So you got resources to know what's going on. Um, if you do miss a day, just check in with me. We'll make sure that you have everything that uh, Grading procedures and all that kind of stuff, I do total points. So if you have any science classes that talk about weighted grades and all that kind of stuff, I, I don't do that. It's not that homework makes up 5% or 10%. Just take all the points, add them up, divide by the possible points, and that ends up kind of being your grade. So again, you want to make sure that you stay up to date with the homework, any kind of assignments, quizzes, and all that kind of stuff that would be going on. The, uh, the types of assignments that we have throughout the year are certainly going to vary. Usually when you have a homework assignment, you're probably looking at 10 to 20 points. I'll let you know about quizzes. They could be a larger announced quiz like you're going to have with literary terms or your vocab quizzes. They could be smaller reading check quizzes, sometimes announced, sometimes unannounced. They're usually 5 to, to 15 points. Anytime we do a test, it's going to be usually in that 50 to 100 point range. And we pretty much have at least one major writing assignment for all of the stuff that we read. So you're looking at four pretty large writing assignments, plus some smaller ones throughout the course of the year, just because of what goes on with the keystone and constructors and boxes and all that stuff. Um, so there will be a fair amount of writing that's going to be going on. Last year, ninth grade, uh, if you were in the school, you had your iPads. I did not have any students with iPads last year. Did you pretty much type on your iPads with the keyboard or still use the computers? Some you, you use laptops still? Um, did anyone use their iPads? Was it okay typing on it or is it like too small? Okay. So there will, and we share laptops with other classes. Uh, if we have the ability to use the laptops for like typing and stuff like that, I'm fine with it. There might be some circumstances where, you know, we have to go with the iPads, but I can understand the keyboard not being the most pleasant thing. Um, we'll figure that out as we're going along. But if it means we're using the laptop, I'm perfectly fine with that. But we'll probably still be using iPads for some things when it comes to quizzes, when it comes to certain assignments. Uh, might be working on those things when we're not using the laptops quite as much. But typing on a laptop is not going to be an issue if uh, that's something that works better for us. A couple of different projects we'll do throughout the year, oral presentations. You're not going to be making a big speech or anything like that, but there could be some projects where you kind of have to present it in front of everyone or within a group, and that's how those things would kind of go together with it. Um, when it comes to daily procedures and all that kind of stuff, I already mentioned to you homework. That's not our bell yet. It's due when it's due, um, so late homework is not going to be accepted. Some larger assignments like essays, I will accept late, 10% a day. You're, for the most part, not going to give me physical copies of essays of your writing assignments. You're going to turn them in on turnitin.com, which is an online kind of database for it. If you haven't used it before, I'll be setting you up and showing you how it works. But then you're not responsible for giving me a physical hard copy. What's nice for you, let's say you have an essay that's due on Friday, you don't then have to give it to me on Friday during fifth period, which you would have till 11.59 p.m. on Friday to ultimately submit it. So you have a study hall seventh period, or you have some time at home, and so you're going to work on that stuff before it ultimately gets submitted. 
we'll get into plagiarism and all that kind of stuff as, uh, as that time comes near. But the big thing, just remember, homework, if it's late, it's not going to be accepted. So don't worry about even trying to really kind of ask about it. I already talked to you about tardies, so make sure that you are on time, because um, I'll be keeping track of those things. Uh, or if there's some kind of like habitual, you know, disrespect, whether toward me or someone else, I kind of keep track of that. But I don't expect that really to be an issue or a problem. Um, all of you should have gotten notice in the mail about new attendance policy, that 918 thing, for semester class. Once you hit nine absences, they have the ability to forfeit credit for it. It would be 18 absences or 10% for a year-long class, which would be us. So make sure you're here, number one, so you know what's going on. Also make sure you're here so that you're not having conversations with administration about being absent too many times, and then you can start losing credit for, uh, for reports. Um, and that counts excused and unexcused absences. If you have a first period class and you come late to school, you come during second period, you're absent for first period, that would count. Um, so if you're coming from, and obviously if there's some issue with the baby bus, that's out of your control. But if you're baby in the morning and this is your first class, you want to make sure you're here for this class because if you come in late during sixth or seventh period, it's still going to be an absent for here. Um, if you do miss a time, make sure you talk to me, schedule about making up stuff. Could be before school, could be after school. I know especially if you're coming from baby in the morning, you don't have a whole lot of period to work with. We'll try to make something work for uh, making up assignments, whether it be after school, during a lunch, or whatever. Backpacks, stuff like that, just keep them um, not on the desk. Keep Just keep them down below as everyone has right now, which is good. Um, if you're someone who has like a water bottle, that would be okay. I know it says don't bring food or drink into class. I don't want food in here, but if you do have like a water bottle or some kind of cup that has a lid, you know, like this would be, you're okay. Um, but don't have like any kind of open container with it just so we can kind of eliminate spill. Mention to you phones, um, earbuds, keep those things away at all times. Don't want to really have them in line of sight. If you are really worried about charging a phone because you have like 10% and you're going to need it you know, for later on after school, give it to me with the charger and we can charge it. But don't leave it like in the back of the classroom because I don't want to be responsible for it and then you forget about it when you leave. After this class, another class, another teacher comes in. So if something is left in here after fifth period, I'm not here, another teacher, another class, I can't guarantee what's going to happen to it. So you don't want to leave that stuff around. Any questions about this? We got a lot of bells that we deal with. Um, our class ends at 11.14, so always at 11.04 we'll get that first ring. And then around 11.10 or so, we, or around 11.08 right now, we get another ring. 11.14 is when we have the ring. Um, should we finish up early, stay in your seat, all that kind of stuff. I don't need people getting up and trying to gather stuff when there's like two, three minutes left in, uh, in class. Okay. Any questions that you can think about? Any concerns with that? Tomorrow, start off going through three reminders, checking those things off. So some of you get 100% in class by tomorrow. Um, again, if getting a binder is going to be an issue, talk to me about it. I can help you out with that. You definitely want to have something to write with tomorrow, a better pencil, because we're going to have to start doing some notes with some things. So notebook paper would be good. Again, I have some extra paper back there that you can turn on the No, you, you don't need it. So if you got your binder and you don't need this folder, I'll take it back from you, even though it has the name on it. You can just slide it forward. I'll take it from you so that they can get some extra stuff. If you need it to hold on to your stuff for now until you get a free ring binder, I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay. Anyone have any questions about where you're going next period? You do have questions?